I am loving the Polyend Tracker. Freebie. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day, so if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Today's patron shout-out goes to Giddy Gavin. Thank you so very much for the support. Let's get started. Not gonna lie, I was supposed to film an entirely different video today, uh, but something went wrong, I think, with the maintenance crew outside. Uh, on Fridays, they go work on the uh, grounds of the apartment complex that I live on, uh, that I live at, and, uh, well, they just finished up about 10 minutes ago. It is 3 p.m. This video has to be out uh, in two hours due to uh, a scheduling mix-up because of the vacation and everything. Anyway, none of you care about that. Like I said, I was going to film a different video, but today instead what I want to do is just talk a bit about my experience with the Polyend Tracker so far. I am absolutely loving this piece of equipment. It is phenomenal, the amount of features that Polyend has packed into this um, gear, this piece of gear, at this price point. I believe the price point is $599 or $649 US. I see it fluctuating between the two of those basically all over the place. Um, if you're unaware, Zounds.com actually sent me this unit. I have it on loan from them. Uh, they're going to have a hard time getting it back from me, though I'm starting to realize. Uh, I'd imagine I will be uh, the proud owner of a Polyand tracker uh, very soon. And what's blowing my mind is I haven't even touched all of the features in this thing yet. I have not used the song mode or the perform modes at all, and I only just started using the sampler, uh, which is just a, a wonderfully um, easy to use and uh, well laid out sampler. In, in my opinion, it's the best one I've ever used when it comes to actually taking the sounds and turning them into music. So tell you what, let's uh, sample a drum hit on the uh, PO32 tonic here. I'm going to plug into the line in uh, and then we will we'll just go ahead and sample um, a drum hit. So let's go to uh, the sample recorder. Just like that, we can pick line in, radio, mic, or uh, or low gain mic, or high gain mic. As you can see, I have it set to line in, I have monitor set to on. And uh, just like that, we can hear the tonic. Now I could give us some gain here, but I don't really think we need it. Uh, let's go ahead and record. So I'm going to hit record, play the kick, hit stop, there's our sample. Uh, now from here, I can go ahead and uh, trim it actually. So we can go zoom, we can zoom in. I can pick my start point, just hit preview. Or you can uh, hear pitched previews right here. Nice, super simple. Uh, let's uh, zoom back out a bit here. For the end point, we'll just pull that in. There we go, crop. There's our sample, save. Now I can name it with the keyboard or I can click auto name. Excellent scent, that's actually a really good name. Uh, I am just gonna name it though, uh, real quick. We will name it, uh, let's go PO32 space and then we'll go kick. Just everything is so well thought out on the Polyend Tracker, like even the keyboard and the way that it's labeled. So you'll see I was very easily able to um, tell which keys were the ones I wanted to type on uh, with these two highlighted kind of pilot keys here, the F and the J. Uh, much like they would be on a real keyboard, and how they're laid out column by column and row by row. Uh, very, very easy. We'll just hit save. Okay, now we have that saved. I've just got a blank project loaded up here. Let's go to the sample loader, and now we can actually load that sample into our project. It'll be under recordings here. Let's see, PO32 kick. There we go. Add, go to our uh, pattern here. Actually, I'm gonna go back and add that in several times. There we go, because we'll also turn it into a synth uh, if we can. Let's go ahead and uh, edit the sample now. So we can go sample editor. As you can see, it's a bit quiet. Uh, normalizer is selected. Just gonna go ahead and apply that. There we go. Now we have a louder sample. Now there's a whole bunch of other destructive effects we can do here on the sample editor. Uh, we can crop it more, reverse, amplify, overdrive, delay, bit crusher, chorus, flanger. Um, and these are all destructive, but only within the project, not the actual sample saved uh, to the SD card. So for instance, if I do go in here and let's, uh, I don't know, let's put some chorus on this, okay? We'll just 
do that. <laughs> we'll preview it. Uh, if I were to apply these effects, those do not apply to the actual sample we recorded to the SD card, just to the one uh, in this project. You can also undo. Uh, I'm happy with how that sounds right there with the normalize. So now I'm going to go to sample playback. Now we can tell it, do we want to uh, one-shot it? Forward loop. Backward loop. Ping pong loop. We can slice it up if it was uh, like a loop. We can turn it into a wavetable synth. Or a granular synth. I'm just going to keep it as a one-shot for now. We can go instrument parameters. Here we can see our volume for this uh, instrument just by itself. We also have panning. Yep. Tuning. Micro tuning or fine tuning. Get the idea. Here we also have access to our three different filter types. A high pass, a low pass, and a band pass. Resonance. And don't worry, we can modulate that. Uh, I will uh, do that in just a second. We also have effects here, so we can go overdrive. We can change the bit depth. That sounds super good. Also, when you're previewing, you can uh, change the pitch just by playing a different pad. Then we also have a basic reverb send. And a delay send. Cool, I'm gonna leave those uh, both off. Now if we press instrument parameters again, we get access to all of our automations. So we can automate the volume with a standard ADSR envelope. Uh, we can also automate the volume with an LFO. We can automate the panning with an envelope and an LFO. We can do the cutoff with an envelope and an LFO. So that's where I was talking about. You can actually automate the uh, filter cutoff uh, either with an LFO or an uh, envelope, which is very, very handy, especially when you're building um, a more like analog style kick drum or just any kind of synth or just really in general, uh, a handy thing to have. You can also automate the wavetable position and the granular position as well as fine tune, but uh, wavetable and granular positions are both super interesting. You can get some really cool effects uh, out of that. We're not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna sequence this four on the floor. So I'm gonna set my step jump to four, which that means uh, when I enter a step, it's going to automatically skip down four steps. And there we go, just like that. Just like that, we have a four on the floor kick drum. Uh, super cool. I can also adjust our pattern length just by holding down length here and either using the jog wheel or by, you know, uh, coming down here and clicking uh, uh, on the pad. So there's a lot of ways to accomplish what you want to do and it's very, very fast and very, very intuitive. So really quick before we uh, wrap up, uh, I guess this is just a little demo of why I like the tracker and some basics. Let's go ahead and turn that uh, kick drum sample from the tonic into a synth as well. So uh, actually let's go sample editor and or sample playback. No sample editor. That's right. We'll go to a new instance of the PO32 kick. We do have to normalize it again because in the tracker's mind it is a new sample. There we go. Now we can go sample playback and we can select wavetable or granular. From here we can change the window and the position. Let's go to granular. You can see there's a lot to, uh, to mess with here. We can choose our loop direction, ping pong, the actual wave shape, the length, and the position. Let's go back to wavetable now. Whoops. There we go. Cool, that sounds good. Let's go instrument parameters and let's automate that wavetable position now. So we're gonna go uh, instrument parameters again to get to the second page. Wavetable position, let's set this to LFO. Now we'll increase the speed. Let's go random. 
and um Cool, I'm gonna drop us down an octave here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We could also do that from the effects section in the sequencer. You can actually um, have quite a variety of different ways to uh, adjust the wavetable position, uh, especially when you start using the fill feature, but we will do that. We'll do that later. For now, let's just go ahead, sequence one note here, and uh, it will keep going until we tell it to stop. So uh, I'm not gonna do that right now. Let's just have a listen. Cool. <laughs> that sounds really sick. And we didn't really do anything to the kick drum other than uh, just some very, very basic uh, editing and telling it how to play back. So let's go back to our sample editor. We are going to pick another instance of that kick drum. Uh, normalize, select it, apply. There we go. Now we will go sample playback and let's change this into a granular uh, synth. Yeah, cool. Use a triangle wave. No, we'll go square. Gonna set loop type to ping pong. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's go to our instrument parameters now. Let's uh, enable a high pass filter. A little bit of resonance. Cool. Now what I want to do is hit play, and then I'm going to uh, listen to that note we already have in there. Hold down a note in this synth, and uh, try to nail the tuning to get it to match up. Yeah, as you can hear, I was just able to jam there. Uh, let's go back to the effects now. Add a little uh, overdrive here. Bring down the bit depth. A little bit of reverb. Yeah, that sounds awesome. We can go to the volume too if we feel it's a bit hot. Bring that down. Now let's just go automate some panning with our LFO here. A little less. There we go. And uh, we could sequence something in, or we could just go back to live jamming. to jam on just the pads. Uh, it's much better with a keyboard. Uh, you can fat finger some notes there like I accidentally did. But uh, hopefully just from that little jam, you can tell that the potential here is absolutely insane. Keep in mind, this is just a 16 step pattern. You can have patterns that are up to 128 steps long and you can have up to 256 patterns per project. Also, if we go into the sample loader right now, you can see we only have five samples loaded and they're all the same sample. And this little jam we were doing right here only used three samples of those five. You can have up to 48 in the project memory, by the way, which uh, lengthwise we're only at 1% right now. So uh, yeah, just an absolute monster. There are so many other features we're gonna touch on. I cannot wait to keep covering the PolyEnd tracker and uh, maybe help someone else out there fall in love with it like I have. I do hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, you can always leave a dislike. That's okay too. Doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Thank you all so very much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.